Hello, Master Fenric here, with a disclaimer from the top of the Wizard's Tower. Though I know you normally come to Shard Select for the choicest cuts of video game meat, but today things are going to get a bit grim. Yes, if you don't like innuendo and disgusting sexual terms, maybe don't listen to this episode. I tried to tell them not to, but they wouldn't listen. It wasn't my idea at all. Zippy, I love getting hench as fuck here at Goro's Games. Ah, fuck off, Buggle. Ah, I'm trying to pop. I know, it's wonderful here. I just wish that I could get even more swole than I already am. If only there was some special potion. Look, Grimace from Michael Donald's is over there being harassed by a gym worker. Uh, Sprucey. Why, why don't you go over there and see if you can leave me the fuck alone? And that's why, Grimbo, and a shark comb is exactly what you need to prove the gate, bro. Uh, I don't know. Oh, hey, Bungle, do you want to go hard on some shark comb supplement? Apparently it gets you swole as fuck. Ooh, how much do you want for it, Sprucey? That's only 3,000 gold coins for you VIPs. Oh, oh fuck, it's Shrek! Shrek. Sprucey, you weaselly lint dick little cunt. Get the fuck out of my swamp! Put up a Shrek. It's okay, Shrek. He's selling us some shark cum. Shark cum? Shark cum? That stuff is for choir boys. You need to try Shrek cum. Oh, how exciting. I'll go get my new pair. Don't be a cunt, Glimmers. You're not getting this big green black whirlst in your flaccid mouth hole. I get it artisanally bottled by Donkey, straight from the tap. But how does Donkey extract it with those hooves? He has a mouth, you stupid, useless bear creature. Now are you buying or what? Welcome to Shark Select. Let's give you something of a disclaimer. In God's land of America, we do not listen to people talking about phrases such as spider manning each other and flu man and rubber ring and whatnot. But this podcast is full of disgusting terminology today. If you're here for the video games, you better go somewhere else. Yeehaw! But only this week. <laughs> but only this week. <laughs> <laughs> Normal service resumes next week. Welcome to Shot Select. Recorded on location from the semi-corral, I mean, sorry about that, the shed, at the bottom of the Wizard Tower. This episode is sponsored by the semi-corral. Park your truck, eat and fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers for that, semi-corral, man. Uh, welcome to the podcast. name, actually? <laughs> semi, and surname Corralman. Semi-corralman, yeah. That's oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Corralman. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like Saul Goodman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, uh, his full name's uh, Semington. Semington Corralman. <laughs> yeah, Semington Corralman. <laughs> yes, he is indeed. So anyway, welcome to Chat Select, as Semington Corralman just said. I am Winstolf, and I am joined by Stu. Hello. By Ryan. Hello. And a special guest for the second week on the truck, because we just liked him that much, and because he can't escape f- past the spooky forest. It's Mr. Ross Cook. It's uh, just going to... St- thank you for feeding me. <laughs> I'm just going to stop you right there. Um, it's This is actually a new guest. It's a different <coughs> Ross Cook to the one we had last week. Oh, is it? Yeah, this is Ross Cook, and surname is C-U-C-K. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> And you'll understand why when we get to the uh, to main say, feature of this episode. I was say, what, what are you insinuating, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, he's not going to come back for after that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. 
I'm, I'm honestly, I'm surprised I haven't thought of that joke. <laughs> it's been, I'm um, fucking. <laughs> I thought that of yesterday, and I thought, you know what, I was going to say it anyway. You tend to find that the, the lowest common denominator jokes usually come from chat select. <laughs> so let me t- let, let me tell you, let me tell the audience all about chat select. We are a weekly gaming podcast recorded under orders from a bunch of worryingly bizarre wizards who live in a firm, satisfyingly rigid tower. If you enjoy the show, please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and whatever podcast service you use and help us to reach more people. If you'd like to contact us with any ideas, feedback, or just for a chat, you can be reached at Shark Select Pod on Twitter and all other socials. We also have a Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Shark Select, where you can pledge to get access to the extra drip tray episodes, along with various other gubbins and new prices which are better. Also, quick mention, um, our, our overlord, Master Fedrig, is now on Twitter, so keep an eye out for him. He's a fucking horror. <clears throat> I, think he's, I think he's currently at, at, at the Fenric, but he's trying to change it to the real Fenric, like Donald Trump. The real Master Fenric. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's basically trying to copy Trump. He's seen that he, he gets lots of retweets, so uh, he, he wants to get on that. Anyway, that's the only thing he's got in common with Trump, though, fucking thankfully. And with that said, let's get on with the fucking show, you motherfuckers. Uh, so, how are we all doing today, everyone? Are we all good? Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah, are you happy to still be trapped here, Ross? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad that you guys have kept me warm, so warm during the night. Well, this bed is big enough for all of us. Yeah, the magic carpet does a good job of uh, tucking you in as well. Yeah, although sometimes it cuddles you a bit too tightly. It's like it's. Uh, I swear it was grinding on my leg the other day. No, that was that was me. Well, that's all right, then. As long as it was just you, Russ. I was going to accuse the magic carpet of being creepy and send it back to the Cave of Wonders <laughs> if it kept up with that kind of behaviour. Aladdin could have it. Right, OK. So, as usual, we're shots. We've had a couple of surprises already. We've had a couple of disclaimers. We had a surprisingly awesome cold intro. Uh, there's many other surprises, but what's the main surprise I hear you ask? Ryan's surprise, isn't it? It is, yeah. don't know if you guys know about Ryan's surprise. I'm sure you yeah. do, because... One knows about Ryan's surprise. So, Ryan, take it away, my friend. What's this week's surprise? It's... Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I haven't done it yet, but it's a, an AI written script I've found. Oh, fucking yes! <laughs> uh, you have to stop me if I have done, but it's CSI Miami. I don't think so. I don't think so either. So. Does it involve that bloke's sunglasses? Yeah. Yes! Of course it does. That's all we need, really, isn't it? <clears throat> Here we are, then. Right, so... CSI, Miami. Exterior, the state of crime scenes, Florida. (laughs) On a sand beach, we see a lifeguard find a dead body that is dead from routine murder. Lifeguard. I did not guard this life. I am bad at what (laughs) it is I do. A car drives out of the ocean and sunglasses man steps out. (laughs) He is the head CSI agent. He is... Hang on. He is the head CSI agent, so he has a head. He sees the body. Okay, yeah. Dead on Sands Shores, looks like he puts on he, he puts sunglasses on the head he has. <laughs> Beach body, Miami style. First degree murder? No. Oh no, that's num It's not no, it's number. (laughs) (laughs) Beach body, Miami style. First degree murder, number 95 degree murder. (laughs) Hot out, hot in Miami. CSI Miami. A singer man screams, indeed. In a long (laughs) song, and a song is played while we see if the actors have names. Most do have. That's good. (laughs) <laughs> now in the CSI house Sunglasses man talks with Tech lady <laughs> Tech lady Got a picture of beach death weapon It is grainy like sand <laughs> They look at computer Picture is grainy like Miami sand It's called cocaine <laughs> Sunglasses man Enhanced pixel with more RAM layers Tech lady puts screwdriver in computer USB port. Picture is clearer. Now looks like Miami knife, which is a gun. In quotation marks. <laughs> Tech lady. I guess we arrest gun. Case done. Not gun. 
Shift the caps lock seven tabs. Tech lady kisses the keyboard with hacking lips. The mayor grows clear as crystal meth. The mayor? I read that wrong. The pitcher grows clear as crystal meth, which is Miami's mayor. <laughs> Can you tell I've only had like four hours sleep? No, you're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Even more bizarre, it's brilliant. <clears throat> Tech lady. My God, my God, Miami God. Weapon <laughs> is sunglasses. Your only clothes. Sunglasses, man. Killed by sun's glasses? Looks like. Take, he takes off the sunglasses, puts on more sunglasses. I killed someone. <laughs> he arrests himself, but then unarrests himself. Since there are no laws in Florida, it's too hot for laws. <laughs> the end. That was very good. <laughs> to, to be fair, it made about as much sense as an episode of CSI Miami, so I like that. <clears throat> Remember about 10 years ago, they were all the rage. Like Everyone was obsessed with CSI. Yeah. You never saw the appeal. It's just a... It's just me. It's just the same thing over and over again, isn't it? It's like Scooby Doo for grown ups. Mm. It was always the vicar. Yeah, that's a good shout. <laughs> no, the, no, sorry. The, it was Midsummer Murders where it's always the vicar, wasn't it? Midsummer Murders is definitely built on some kind of like um, where the ley lines cross, like a strong point for hell or yeah. something, isn't it? Yeah. That place is fucking weird. Right, okay. So thank you for that, Ryan. That's a very good surprise. Well done. Your well tie-in has just made it even better. Because <clears throat> I can tell you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Several points. It doesn't help. I was reading some lines ahead of himself. So. Yeah. <laughs> you did well. You did well. So, um, dear listeners, we've disclaimed this twice. This is your final disclaimer. Turn ye back if you are faint of heart or don't like to hear people talk about grim sex We're Talking acts. about sexual acts. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <clears throat> the wizards have been in touch... <laughs> the wizards have uh, been in touch with me, guys. They're trying to get back on the dating scene. But like American Pie, remember that classic movie from the early 2000s where a man fucks a pie? Uh, they want to be like that. So they want disgusting phrases and jokery that they can do. And Master Cumbrack's trying to be stiffler. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. He's dyed his hair ginger and he keeps <laughs> shouting things about lesbians. So if grapefruit would put you off... <laughs> Yeah. Maybe don't listen any further. <laughs> Great fruiting is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> a very deep, very awful iceberg. If you're here for the video game content, we will do the Wizard's Tower afterwards, and that's not a sex act. <laughs> Although it should be. <laughs> yeah, just... Uh, so, is it like the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yes! Is that actually on here? Yes, it is. What, Eiffel Tower? It's the same as the Eiffel Tower, just wear wizard's robes. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, <laughs> yeah. if Eiffel Tower's actually on the uh, list. I think it is, yeah. I think it is. What about my chode grinding? You know what I mean? oh, chode yeah. grinding. <clears throat> That's a good point. Uh, pretend the disclaimer happens after this, listeners. Stu, I believe you have something that's grinding your chode. Is it true? It is. I've got a couple of things that are grinding my chode at the moment. Every Both YouTube related. Oh, I love to hear this then. Right, so the first one is if you watch maybe one or two Modern Warfare videos on YouTube, you get inundated with like fucking loads of YouTubers and they're, like, all telling you what the best fucking loadouts are for different guns. Oh, and the God. fucking thing that winds me up the most is the fucking thumbnails, where it's always a picture of the gun on its side, <laughs> like, and then their face at the bottom corner going, oh, what the fuck? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's got the stats on the thingy, and they're all red all the way to the end, and that is not possible on any fucking gun. And then when you watch the video, it's just them playing gameplay against fucking bots <laughs> or like shit people like they must smurf into going to like shit lobbies or something because I've never seen games where people act like they do in their games yeah like and it's all staged loadouts <clears throat> yeah and the loadouts for the gun it's just the most simple fucking things like that you should be able to work out anyway it's like yeah a sight a suppressor <laughs> uh, an underbarrel uh, lots of ammo uh and it and it shreds. It's just a fucking laser. But another, <laughs> another fucking what? thing that fucks me off, right? And I'm just seeing if I can find a fucking clip of him. There's a man on TikTok that does um, the same type of thing, but he always does his stupid fucking voice when he's doing it, and he always goes, "It is a laser." I don't know who this is, but I really hate them already. Mm-hmm, yeah, just... we'll wait till you hear the cunt. Zero <laughs> recoil class or your money back. First, you need the kilo, 
with a monolithic suppressor. Surprise, surprise. Singard Arms, 19.8 inch, Prowler, Barrel. Singard Arms, Sniper Pro Stock. That's bullshit. Tactical <laughs> foregrip, Underbarrel. Worst grip in the game. 100 round drums, ammunition. Stupid. Tis a laser. Why is he... Does he sound like... Is he supposed to... Is he supposed to... Oh my. He's, that fucking class will do nothing for you. If you play the game for five minutes and realise what those attachments do, it will do absolutely fuck all. And it is a laser. No, it's sounds not. like he's it's trying to. Shit. Sounds like he's trying to copy the wizards. He's wearing a fucking. Should we make them a? He's wearing like a robe and stuff in the video, so maybe he is. Yes, he wants to be a wizard, and bad news for him. Fenrig does not like it when people do that. He'll go after him and meat staff him to death. Suspicious fluids burning away his flesh. Sounds like he's trying to put on the voice of like a fucking prince or something. <laughs> prince. Yeah. Good day. What he's doing. He sounds fucking Good stupid. <laughs> you need a monolithic scoop. I had a new idea for a character for Shatter Select, by the way, but I didn't want to just drop him in, so I might as well just tell you about him. A Roman Emperor <laughs> Shatter Selectus. <laughs> Good day. It's pretty much just uh, <laughs> Michael Palin from Life of Brian. <laughs> Throw him to the floor. <laughs> Shots and select. Yeah. So the other thing is, um, when I was getting a new headset, I was what doing my research on YouTube, watching videos and reviews of headsets and stuff. I should do, yeah. And every time you get to a fucking unboxing video, it doesn't matter. I've realised it doesn't matter what the fuck it's for, especially tech stuff that are unboxing. And if it's an American doing it. Right, they have the box out, and then they get a big fucking flick knife from somewhere, <laughs> and then and then they fucking cut the smallest piece of fucking salad tape that's holding the box together, <laughs> and then put it back and put it put the knife down, this big fucking sword, put it back down, and then open up as normal. It's like, what the fuck is that there for? Because they're Americans. You, why you just, my knife? <laughs> why don't you just cut it before you do the fucking video, not just get a fucking flick knife out? <laughs> <laughs> cut, tiny little cut and then put it away again. Fucking flexing. Huh? Fucking K bar combat. I just, knife. I just turn it off as soon as you do that. Oh, it's got his knife out. Never mind. Another video. Any video where they say, don't forget to ring the bell, gets instantly turned off. Well, if I'm watching it, it's like, fuck off. <laughs> when we've got ads every five fucking minutes, it's like, mate, this isn't going to fucking. Or when work. you're watching a tutorial video and every five minutes it's. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'll just yeah. I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. you're gonna need to uh, go ahead and do this. And... You don't need our permission. Yeah. And then just it's, I'm it. just gonna go ahead and watch another video. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, yeah fucking YouTube man. It's because a few really popular people set the uh, tone for it years ago, and that's it now, isn't it? I just, hate the, fu- just hate the go ahead and that just does my in. It's like these fucking vloggers. Like my missus watches some of this shite. It's the most self-obsessed people. Like these millionaires who've made their millions off just making videos of the stupid, vapid faces on YouTube. And you've got one girl going, they're in a stupid, brainless, rich boyfriend. They're in the car. So, uh, we're spons- Audi are sponsoring us this week. Uh, they've let us this car. I don't know what it is, though. It's not important. It's a fucking Audi R8. Some people will get the left tip for that, you cunt. <laughs> oh, I hate them so much. Right, anyway, sorry about that. <clears throat> Uh, so was that was that is that your chode well and truly grounded you? Yeah, nice fine point on that one. Oh, very good, Ryan. I believe you have something that's uh, nestling your balls, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Stuart's grounded his chode. I just want to tell you a moment about what's uh, what's really been nestling my balls recently. <laughs> yeah, I'm using that term actually quite literally. Because I've forked out for some expensive boxes for the first time in my life. Oh, nice. And I'm loving them. <laughs> hey, nice. Is it free and easy? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, actually. They've got... <laughs> it sounds so silly when you're trying to explain. Oh, go on. They're like proper fitted boxes. Okay. And there's a, a patented, trademarked, ballpark pouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It's like what two bits of... Uh, Sax S A X X. I know, yeah. And it's got it's like it's like fitted boxes, but on the you inside. See the hand motion is different. On the in, on the inside, on the inside, there's a pouch for your cock and balls, and then on either side of that, there's like a mesh to keep it um, oh, separate, so there's no keep it snug. Yeah, so there's no skin on skin contact between your balls. And your legs. Hey, that'll, that'll cut chafage, right? Yeah, it says it's, you don't get chafage on your, on your 
Uh, I like. I like to imagine it's for dudes out there that are just so hetero. They're like, no, I don't even let my own balls touch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's gay. Gay. <laughs> they don't touch my own balls. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> just as you think of uh, Ned Flanders, it's like I'm wearing <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid, sexy Ryan. <laughs> Little do you know, I'm wearing them today. Oh, he's in the same room as me as well. I thought I felt a bit hot under the collar. Mm. They're lovely though. <laughs> Fucking nice. <laughs> anyway, so that's what's been nestling my balls. Expensive boxes. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. I like the way you led into that. Right then, so that's the, the quote unquote clean part of the podcast over. Are you guys ready? Yeah, talked about Ryan's balls. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit YouTubers and Ryan's balls. Just a typical day on chat. <laughs> so now we go. Oh God help us. So like I say, Master Ferrig wants us to make a list of sexy phrases he can seduce uh, his lovers with. <clears throat> Yeah, it's all Master Big Boss' idea, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's the fucking bring leader. Since, since he appeared on the scene, it's been really, <laughs> really boisterous. <laughs> I keep seeing Master Cumbrag run. Master Cumbrag literally wiped his dick on the shed door this morning. Spicy got a splinter. He did in his jebo. He was crying about it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Serves him fucking right. Oh, anyway, let's launch into it, shall we? Well, um, there's, there's there's one that we should really start with, and it's one that we that was. Uh, Patented last week. Oh yeah, yeah, Rossin. <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to? Can you? Do you want to explain that one, Ross? What that was? Yeah. So uh, I think it's it's been going on for years. It's just not been named. Um, but it is when <laughs> it's when the anus of the partner, male, female, doesn't matter, is prolapsed. Now this can be pre-prolapsed or <laughs> prolapsed in the act. Um, but once it is fully prolapsed, maximum prolapse. That's when you enter in again um, and have full sex to completion. <laughs> that is fucking disgusting. <laughs> is this like... in full rosebud form. <laughs> yeah, it, as as, uh, <laughs> as more as as red. I mean, you need maximum heat coming off of it as well. Um, <laughs> I feel a bit sick. <laughs> it's like punching a bucket of meat. <laughs> Oh my god, I mean, start strong, right? Start strong. <laughs> oh, there's some class ones there. You, obviously, Craig, you've not read ahead, but uh, I had fun trying to find some of these ones. There's probably loads more out there, but when you're trying to search for stuff on Google, it's, you have to be careful what you're searching for, don't you? Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely on a list now. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, welcome to the uh, podcast Angel. <laughs> <coughs> it's, just, it's just us. Right, okay, so what about the rusty trombone then? That's a classic one, isn't it? Yeah, That's a famous one. Explain the rusty trombone, Craig. The rusty trombone is when you, is when you uh, partake in the act of uh, eating out someone's anus whilst reaching around and giving them the old, uh, the old uh, hand job, the old wanky wanks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, and so, if you saw that in a silhouette, it would look like you're playing a trombone. That's it? right, yeah. And if you're really good at it, you can project your voice into the anus cavity and go like that, like you are actually playing the trombone. Anus yeah. cavity. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't actually give any extra pleasure, but it sounds funny, like you are actually playing a musical instrument. And that's all. I think. I, I, think, I, think, I, think I, I think I saw anus cavity playing once. Yeah. Good band, good band, yeah. Second, if you if you're um, really good at the rust, rusty trombone, the instrument might sing for you. It might do, yeah. Right, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's got really <laughs> Ryan's got really sassy since he started wearing these boxes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. What's next then? Who else wants to go at this? How do you uh, recover after after these? Well, there's the, the the classic Eiffel Tower, isn't there? Oh yeah, which is? So it's a it's a three three person uh, position, <laughs> and the middle person bends over, and then the other two take both ends. Yep. One in the front, one in the back. Yep. The mouth and the anal cavity. Doesn't have to be anal; it could be a woman. That's true. Yeah. Good thinking. And then uh, <laughs> the, the two the two outer people high five. Making the position of an Eiffel Tower, famed Parisian landmark. Yeah, it's also uh, going on from this is uh, where we got the name of the extra show, the drip tray. Yes, it's which Craig's is favourite sex position. This was is... uh, skiing. It was called. Remember, it's super. It's dirty. Skiing. Yeah, so skiing is uh, was one person in the middle, isn't it? And then uh, a penis in each hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ski for, poles. For the ski poles. Um, yeah. If you can imagine this, listener, squatting on. Yeah, squatting onto a penis. Yeah, like, again, and skiing then, pose. Uh, was it one in the mouth as well? No, it was one. 
Yeah, and one then one in, one in the mouth. In the front. Yeah. Basically, every orifice in the hand is uh, engaged for this. Yeah. yeah, so that's skiing, and then Craig's favourite position was being the trip tray, which lies well, underneath yeah. the whole act. And, and collects and the uh, everything. Exactly. <laughs> Maximum nutrition, he'd have to do any work. Yeah. You'd probably get a good view from down there. <clears throat> Can we rename that move to Eddie the Eagling? <clears throat> Skiing's easier, isn't it? Ah, oh, fair. <laughs> yeah, skiing's easier. <laughs> Eddie the Eagling it, sounds extra filthy. Is it? Is is Eddie the Eagle dead? He's alive. I just wonder if we could award it to him posthumously. No, I think... uh, okay, we'll wait till he's dead. Yeah, wait till he's dead. Then we'll get him. We, we, what a sad day for poor Eddie the Eagle. Now let's rename it Sex Move in his name. Uh. <coughs> now next I see there's a, tr- a triple of a dirty, a mo- dirty moves. Quadruple. Have... Oh, a quadrupel. Oh yeah, I thought because we, were... we wanted a Rossing, I thought that was it. But no, 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 no. So yeah. yeah, this is a uh, this is one. So this is where you can take part at home as well, listeners. So you go on to dictionary.com <laughs> and type dirty, then your first name, and then this is what you get. Yeah, so I think we should all read our own out, shouldn't we? Yeah. So, Stu, go ahead, lad. Dirty Stuart is when you funnel dirty bong water up your anus and shart it out all over a pregnant woman. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's on brand with shart things. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> I thought this was something different from what I've searched previously, but apparently a Dirty Ryan is a badass with a fucked up mind and sex toys. Better love him. Yeah, right. Better love him. Nice. There's, no, uh, there's no sort of <laughs> position there. It's just sort of like a statement. Ryan's just got a cupboard full of all kinds of worn yeah. down sex toys, <clears throat> which has seen much action. <laughs> that rampant rabbit's begging for death. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> the Dirty Craig... Is could you not find the dirty wind stuff? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's when you tell a lot of big dick jokes and a woman responds with something like, Guys who brag always have the tiny ones, <clears throat> but then the two of you have sex. She finds out your dick is huge and she winds up hospitalized. Wow, <laughs> 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 that's more like a story. <laughs> It's completely untrue as well. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a bit underwhelming. <clears throat> right, okay. Um, go ahead, Ross. Dirty Ross, fucking sex god. This man is the bee's knees, the cat's meow. He'll do anything for anyone. That's true. Anything to you know, I, I just will say, I didn't write this, <laughs> but the fact that that this the fact that this person's put the bee's knees and the cat's meow makes me think that maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> like in a dream, like in the fugue state or something. You just went on to, went on to write. Yeah, like fucking Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Dickhead <laughs> just decided to get on the internet and write this shit. Mr. Dickhead took over long, long ago in our case. <laughs> 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 wow, I mean, fair enough. You are a sex god. <clears throat> Sorry, apparently. I'm throat from laughing too much. Right, the next one is fucking grim. Who wants to read this one? Dragon Butter. Who well, wants to go on? Oh, yeah, there. I found this one. Go on, it's you. You're up. <laughs> Dragon Butter. The taste of anus and semen in the mouth of a woman <laughs> after giving he- after giving him a rim job and a blow job. Used in the context of a woman cheating or being polyg- uh, polygamous. If you don't want dra- if you don't want dragon butter, make sure your woman is monogamous with you and is not cheating on you. <laughs> that is Jesus. That's fucking awful. <laughs> That's one of the. That is terrible. I'm glad that um, I didn't read that one. <laughs> Makes me feel a bit nauseous. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'll read out this next one because I found this one. I thought it's quite funny. Uh, Charizard in. Uh, it's when you light a girl's pubes on fire. And put it out with your jizz, <laughs> and then you have to flap your arms and say you don't have enough badges to train me. <laughs> He's too high a level. <laughs> Ryan just runs out the room going ah! Just run, just run away. So I'm just wondering, like, do you put on a voice as Charizard? I just think I'd like to scream. I don't know what voice I'd do with it, but I, I in my head, I. Would... <laughs> You don't have enough badges to train me. <laughs> mm. Pokemon music plays in the background. As you light the pubes on fire. <laughs> which, Im- which implies, like at a certain point, they she will have enough badges to train you. Yeah, no, then you are right. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get to, G- to um, Giovanni. 
So I, I've got I grabbed through quite a few. Um, the main thing that I try to do because so many of them are so violent against women. I try to like oh, all the yeah. most disgusting ones I could that could be either way. Um, so for this first one, you don't even need another person. That's good. Um, it's called the bait and tackle. <laughs> um, so the bait, the bait and tackle. Uh, so it's when sailors used to go off for a long voyage. Uh, you get a tall jar, fill it completely with earthworms. When you get lonely, open the jar, fuck away. The earthworms will provide some slithery stimulation, and your protein lobe will keep them nicely fed. Oh. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's good for the worms. At least not they quite enjoy it. But... Yeah. What if you get one clamped like, in your meters, though? Oh, well, extra fun. Um, yeah, true. Flapping around like a whip. Yeah, you have to just grab it and pull it out, wouldn't you? Yeah, you're right. Put it uh, up there. <laughs> Ryan's gone. <laughs> <laughs> like pulling spaghetti out of your nose. Oh, my oh. God. This episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just thought of that. Like, I don't know what's weirder. Either the worm in your urethra or spaghetti up your nose. What's happened to this person? <laughs> I mean, Ross has been on two episodes of a podcast ever, and it's been us three trying to groom him, and then him talking dirty sex acts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Stu, you ever heard of the Kentucky tractor puller? No. <laughs> So the uh, Kentucky tractor puller is uh, during anal sex, the receiver the receiver clenches really hard and tries to run away with the penis still inside. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the wizards will love that one. Pull me, pull me. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh my god. <laughs> what about the ball koozie? <laughs> you place your nut in a bowl of warm water. You can have a girl or a boy blow a blow a straw into the bowl and blow bubbles under your balls. Rubber ducky is optional, of course. <laughs> quite a nice one, that. Quite yeah, mellow uh, compared to the rest. I like the idea of the rubber ducky. That's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Who else did... did you fuck the duck? You know what? No, it's just you a rubber ducky. Fuck the... um, I'm sicko. Got... <laughs> oh. You got too far. That was for afters. <laughs> You're sick. You're a wrong man. Go ahead, Ross. Um. So I'm going to go far the other end. I think I started off quite gently with the first one. The next one is cock stuffing. Um, <laughs> so you basically take, <laughs> again, you're working by yourself until the end. Um, you use a thin cylindrical item, thermometers or wire, um, and insert them into the dick hole. <sighs> and over over many months, continue, uh, continue to gradually ream out the hole with larger items. <sighs> thus, ult- thus ultimately allowing your buddy to obtain the goal of fucking your urethra. So that's literally meters pounding. Yeah, oh. it's like docking, but the next level. Oh, dry docking. <laughs> and just want to explain what docking is to people that don't know what that is from the listeners. Uh, so that is when, to my understanding, obviously, uh, to my understanding, when two uh, when two penises meet, one of them uh, having been uncircumcised, the uncircumcised person places their forehead skin over the other. Um, Docking with them essentially, so that you imagine little seamen astronauts going through the airlock. <laughs> oh, this is wrong. <laughs> so, so what the one you've just described be like assault docking, like the assault party smashing through the hull? <laughs> I think so. It's like the SWAT team going in, like these guys are trained. This has been months in preparation, they know what they're doing. It's like the start of Halo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think that would be way too big. If you pop Halo in there, your dick hole will just <laughs> There you go. One video game reference. God, what more do you want? Yeah. Uh, what about a... I just like to imagine like a guy goes to his mate and just like, oh, I've done something for you. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't told him for months. Look at the size like, of Look, this. Look, you can do this now. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bit of a project for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a dick a lot at the fucking sandworm off June. <laughs> oh, Star Wars, Salak pit. Yeah, Salak dick. Oh. <laughs> you can boba, <laughs> you, you can launch your boba fett into that Salak dick. <laughs> anyway, who wants to talk about Dutch rudders? Yeah, I can go with Dutch rudders. So a Dutch rudder is, uh... oh, it's definitely not gay, is it? 
I don't think it. I think it counts as a. It counts as purely heterosexual. Yeah. Unless, does, unless, unless you want it to be gay, then yeah. it can be. So Dutch Ruddy is you hold your own penis, and then a s- second party, man or woman, um, moves lifts your forearm up and down. Yeah. So essentially, they're using so they're your jerking arm you off with your own arm. Yeah. So technically, it's masturbation. Yeah. So if you're a bit queasy <clears throat> about that kind of thing, don't worry about it, fam. We got you covered. Mm. Right, and then <laughs> there's the the double Dutch rudder from that, where is you ho- you move somebody else's forearm as they're moving your <laughs> forearm twice removed from yeah, the act. Yeah, so <laughs> so you basically it's mutual masturbation. Yeah, pretty but you're much moving somebody else's arm. Well, that's, it's lovely. You can line them all up like a train, like a train's wheels. You could, yeah, you could keep rock. going. Couldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> this was infinitely expandable. That could be called training at that point. So a chugga 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 chugga, and actually come you go. <laughs> You could have it in a, in a line, couldn't you, as well? <laughs> yeah, it's like a wholesome version of the human centipede. Yeah! <laughs> we were going to say you could call it Thomas the Tank Engineer, but, but that's a bit weird. But it's supposed to be don't worry, it's not, um, <laughs> it's not exclusively for males. There's also the French rudder, which is uh, the oh. female Dutch rudder. Yeah, fair enough. Which is, is obviously the same action. Yeah, I've got, yeah just a bit They more. just move the just move the <clears throat> woman's forearm instead. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a different angle, essentially, isn't it? Yeah. Really? It's not... I mean, you well, could... not for you, because you're just moving their arms. Yeah, true, but I'm saying, like, is the elbow in a different place? Mm, mm, mm. I don't know. Yeah, but you're just moving their arms, it doesn't matter. Yeah, true. It? All you're doing is assisting their motor function. Yeah. You're just providing motion. Yeah, you're totally not even involved. Yeah. Don't get a count as cheating if you did it. Ryan. I don't know, would it? Let's try. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ryan just genuinely made eye contact there. It's like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> 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 just uh, Dutch ruddering right now. Oh. Yeah. Ryan, more gentle, please. It hurts. <laughs> right, okay. So, Ryan, uh, you've been looking forward to this one. Tell us all about the bus driver. Is it Hank Ryder? So, the bus driver, yeah, if you're interested. So, <clears throat> during uh, Doggy with... A partner. A partner. Essentially, I think it, it's more towards a f- female, yeah. but I suppose you could, could be adapted. No, sorry, it will have to be a female. So draw in doggy, insert your thumb into the ass and <laughs> rotate like you're driving a bus. Yep. And then <laughs> the option then is to reach around and grab their boob to mimic the honk of the horn of the bus. I like yeah. it. <clears throat> Suppose if you had so a... Do you reckon you could go and do the air brakes and well, the door thinking... opening and everything, you're full... Role play. Well, I was about to say, if if it, if, <laughs> if, charge you. if I was about to say, get on the bus. If yeah, a, yeah. If a dude's the bus instead of a lady, you could use reach under and use the use no, the dick as like a handbrake. No, because it's during doggy, you have to insert stick. the thumb into the ass. What men do you not have two assholes? Three. Uh, I do. Is that not normal? Hmm. <laughs> Awkward. No, but no, because obviously the bus driver's fucking in the ass, and then he reaches under and grabs the dick as a handbrake. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You don't need, two, don't need two asses for that. No, but you drive with your thumb in the ass. So, you got... so where's your cock and balls if you're bumming a so man? you like this. Yeah. <laughs> when you reach under. <laughs> yeah, but where'd, you put, where'd you put your cock if it's a man that you're bus driving? Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell, how long no, did no, that no, take? No, 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 hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> Could you not put your, uh, your phallus, your, your member... And the thumb in the same hole. Oh. I suppose, but then you've got to move your thumb as well. I just yeah, I okay, you get cramp. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> cock if you're fucking a man. <laughs> <laughs> when you get cramp, you can try. Can someone draw Ryan a diagram, please? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, draw a diagram, please. Send it to our Twitter account. <laughs> what of the bus driver? <laughs> yeah. And any other artists want to do that? Um... <laughs> Ross is actually <laughs> tapping out. <laughs> I knew we'd break you. That could be it. that could be the next That's episode. Do, do <laughs> draw a picture of a uh, Hasbro's yeah, driving yeah. stew. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit Ross! Hit him! <laughs> uh, you'd have to... no, I think the challenge should be at the end of this. You have to choose one for Ross to draw out of all of them. Yeah, I've just on. told you that that oh, one. Yeah, that right. one. <laughs> Ryan's demanding. <laughs> Has bus driving. Yeah. <laughs> with a little hat on. Part two. Part two with the. I like the comic. A, Well, we could we could adapt it to make it more for your needs, Stu. It could be the train driver. Yes, or the juggernaut driver. Oh yeah. 
Stu would like that. <laughs> Has the little one of them old timey bloody train drivers. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Dick I kind of see it as like blue and white striped. <laughs> anyway, right. That's up to Rust. So next up, we've got a very classic one: Spider. We all know Spider Man, don't we? Spider Man, Spider Man. It's when you come in your hand and then you go, "Go web!" and throw it in someone's face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all know that one. It's a famous, it's a classic, staple. What about the monkey face? Have you heard of that one? No. That's when, I've not heard of monkey face. That's when you rip a handful of your own pubes out. Thro- well, what do you, do? you do the Spider-Man as normal, but then straight afterwards you rip a handful of your pubes out and throw that in the face as well. And the pubes stick to the cum. Monkey face. Oh, it's like a, you call it the spider monkey. Oh, I never thought of being called the spider monkey before. That's even better. You've just improved my life, Ross, again. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, God, the next ones are awful. <laughs> and I'll explain these ones. These are the ones that you and Stu made up. Yeah, right? go on, Stu. Yeah, these are the ones that you put names to yeah. the actions that you've done, haven't you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we totally did. Yeah, these are these are in-house ones. In-house. <laughs> so Flumin's when... Aftermarket. <laughs> Flumin's when you... Uh, when somebody... This is on uh, the Pisses okay. into your asshole yeah. Yeah. and fills you up. Yes, like a, and then like a vest. The, the actual fluming act, <laughs> the fluming acts when you like sort of shit it back out over them. <laughs> yeah, you do a poo. Uh, <laughs> and it becomes, it becomes, it becomes rubber ringing if when you do that a poo comes out as well. <laughs> we are the worst people. <laughs> we are so so bad. I, I, hope, I, I hope our listeners aren't listening to this, but our I, parents and I kind I kind of want to imagine it of you two sitting there afterwards, going, "What could we name this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My God, we've done it, Stu. We've invented the ultimate sex act. But what can we call it? <laughs> Stu, if, it if did... Pixie Podcast listening, is he allowed to? Is he old enough for this? I don't think he is. Ooh, don't stop listening, Pixie. Yeah, come on, Pixie. And you, infant dinosaur. Yeah, and that other friend that I've got who's good at Call of Duty. I think he might be older than oh, That's all right, then. He's, he's allowed to listen. <laughs> so, next up, uh, obviously, we've got the spit roast. We've already discussed that, really, haven't we? It's yeah. part of the Eiffel Tower. Very famous move. So, let's move on to Wolfbagging. Have you guys ever heard of Wolfbagging? Someone yeah. I used to work with put me onto this, and it's fucking horrible. I will warn you in advance. So, imagine, there you are, doggy style and a lady or a man, yeah? Just going at it, right? Enjoying it. Then you get a cocktail sausage on a piece of string and make them swallow it. And then, just as they're about to get to reach the vinegar strokes, the moment of uh, like the moment where they see God, <laughs> you yank it back out of the mouth, and they puke just as they reach the moment. Oh man, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that was my reaction when, 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 my, when, when, when my old colleague described that to me. I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's supposed to close the bump hole and make it more interesting. <laughs> If you believe, I'd argue, it. yeah, it does make it more interesting. <laughs> a lot of cleaned up afterwards, though. That's fucking grim, isn't it? <laughs> right, who's just added the angry dragon? Me. Go on. Angry dragon's when you're doggy, yeah. and then you say somebody else's name, and then see how long you can hang on for. <laughs> <laughs> imagine the wizards. Imagine the wizards doing that, can't you, the little bastards? They'd be all over doing moves like that. <laughs> that was very funny. <laughs> Gosh, they're just horrible people. <laughs> you can see them doing it. So, uh, what about moosing? Have you heard of moosing? No. Moosing is more of a game. <clears throat> it's a one-player game. Basically, again, like most of these seem to be, you're taking someone from behind in the traditional doggy style, but there's a full-height mirror in front of you. And at, cer- and at certain points, when you think you can get away with it, you put your hands to the top of your head like a moose's outlet and go... <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to try and you have to try and do it without your partner noticing. And that's that's moosing. <laughs> you only get one life. It's in, it's in, it's like battle royale. If you get caught, you're out. <laughs> and that's moosing. <laughs> that's quite wholesome compared to the rest. It's quite <laughs> it's gentle, isn't it? <laughs> we have to keep bringing it down a bit yeah. before we go back. Especially for this next one. <laughs> yeah, who's reading this one? I'm not. <laughs> no, you're probably best. No, nah, I don't one. think the fabled go one. Go on, Ryan. Which one? The behemoth? No. <laughs> the one above it. No, you can read that one. No, it's you fine. can read it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You fucking do. Don't, don't try no, that. I don't know what that We've one been, is. Look, we, this has been a dirty myth since 2004 or something. You're not trying that. <laughs> fine. This is one. Put me on the spot. This is one. That, yeah? 
from before Urban Dictionary existed, but this was a legendary one. This wasn't was it? like college era. Right. Rainbow Kiss. <sighs> I'll explain it then. The Rainbow Kiss. Imagine, if you will, a pint glass. And into that pint glass, you and the, you maybe your lover, maybe a group of close friends, maybe a group of strangers, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a f- group of podcast hosts. Yes, <laughs> maybe all four people recording this podcast right now. Um, basically drop their bodily fluids into the pint glass. I'm talking what, spit? Talking a bit of the old semen. If you're a lady, maybe a bit of the old uh, lubricant, natural lubricant there. Um bit of blood. Period of bloodless one, yeah. Oh, shit. Period bloodless one, I <laughs> oh, as well. Shit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that um, a bit of everything, and then at the end, <laughs> as if that's not already bad enough, you have to fucking drink it. <laughs> they have to, you know, you have to hold it in your mouth and pass it back. Oh until yeah, that was it. <laughs> it's fucking grim. That, <laughs> I'm feeling a bit nauseous thinking about that. Um, I remember once we went on a night out in the, our local town before the wizards kidnapped, kidnapped us, and there was a dirty pint glass with what looked like fluids in it on a wall. Remember that? <laughs> well, oh my yeah. god! It's a fucking rainbow kiss. <laughs> Someone's actually fucking done it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is. I think this might be the lowest point of, of yeah. Shout Select. It might be. <laughs> well, well, hold on. Well, you know, let's let's keep it going. Yeah, true, true. We're not there yet. What's this next? Uh, it's- Oh, I thought Ross was about to say something. Oh, go on, Ross. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. I've got one. Um, So let's keep it. Let's keep it going down. Um, The Hmong. So you need to obtain a female corpse that's been dead for (laughs) two to three days. um, Then place your mouth just outside her vaginal opening. Have a friend jump on her stomach and try and catch as much stuff that comes out as you can in your mouth. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's real anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> now, I did say at the beginning that I didn't want any that you know, had violence toward women, but she's dead already. We don't know how she yeah, died, I'm so sure, it's fine. I, I'm sure a ghost won't mind. A yeah. ghost will be like, get in! In the background, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just, just speculating there. Uh, what's this next one? How would you even say that? Be Hyman. Be Hyman. Okay, I see it, yeah. Go on, who's reading this one out? Uh, just reading it now. All right, so the be hymen is a metaphorical hymen of the anus. <laughs> like the hymen, this is written upon penetration of the aforementioned area, eliminating the subject's anal virginity. <laughs> well, I would presume most of that has been done for most of the other acts we've already said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the be hymen is behind us at this point. <laughs> I like the way you the metaphorical hymen. I thought, okay, I'm glad it's not a real one. Thanks for that. Stu, what's the next one? A Mexican avalanche. <laughs> Ejaculate into a woman's hair and then throw her down a flight of stairs. <laughs> I suppose that could be a man as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not safe. It's horrible. It's got to be open yeah, minded. Seen us at the, t- <laughs> the, the modified version. Tobogganing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Do you want to read? Yeah, tobogganing's a similar <laughs> one. Um, it, so you're doing doggy style at the top of the flight of stairs. Uh, and you give her a, mon- <laughs> a modified donkey punch between her shoulders, and as her arms as her arms fly back into the air, you grab hold of the wrist and thrust, and you should be able to ride down the stairs like a toboggan. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I mean, I suppose, I suppose that has to be a woman because if you tried it for a, on a man, you had that like a natural handbrake. <laughs> Spearing steps, dig, like, dig in. Ding! Yeah, you dig in. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely how that works. Uh, there's a Utah standoff next as well. Oh, this is going to be bad. When two men, typically Mormon, because <coughs> it's Utah, I suppose, lock <laughs> eyes and proceed to simultaneously give each other hand jobs in a contest to see who can withstand orgasming the longest. The first one to ejaculate has lost the Utah standoff and is, by virtue, <laughs> homosexual. <laughs> if you lose, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this widely practiced method of settling disputes. Originated among Adam Smith's early followers as a non-lethal alternative to duelling. Recently, it has been employed as a litmus test to determine where a man falls on the spectrum of sexuality. A heterosexual male would obviously not allow another man to force him to climax. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh... Uh, (laughs) Oh, this one's brilliant. Next one is the sneaky Rafiki. It's got a nice ring to it as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it does. Um... 
So it's always it's always a girl, but it doesn't have to be. So yeah, exactly. This is a there. quote while railing a person in the ass <laughs> before you're about to bust. Take out your dick and shove your thumb up the brown eye. <laughs> After the thumb is inserted, sp- inserted, spit on their back, causing them to turn around. As they are turning around to look back, pull your thumb out and glide it across their forehead and recite Simba just like a freaking from the lion. Simba! <laughs> <laughs> That's similar to a dirty Sanchez, isn't it? Mm. A bit different. I like that. Right, Stu. I just want to explain a dirty Sanchez quickly. That's people that might not know. Similar manoeuvre, but you wipe the um, poo stained digit across the under the nose like a moustache. There you go. If man. you will. Right, Stu, you can be the last Steen one. Did you? Yeah, yeah. You be the Ghostbusters fan. This last one's for you, mate. Has Ross got any more? Has he? I, I've, I've got a couple. Um, then I'll do one, and then if Stu, and then I'll, I'll do my last one. Um, okay. So we've got... Uh, this one's horrible, so I'll do this one now. Uh, <laughs> the duct tape trick. It's a simple one. Uh, you wrap a hamster in duct tape so you can safely fuck it without danger of a messy split. That is awful. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, it can be male, female, hamster. It doesn't yeah, matter. we are. All these. Does uh, it have to be a hamster? <laughs> you can't... Um, right. No, I suppose if you're a larger person, maybe a guinea pig. <laughs> right, Ryan, are you thinking would it work on a collie? No. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Something you can pick up with your hand, isn't it, I guess? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I suppose the, the main thing is whatever animal you are having sex with has to be small enough that there is a chance you will tear the little thing apart. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not much hope for me, though. <laughs> I know we'll have to worry about you is putting it into your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call me Princess Toadstool for nothing, you know? That's, that's a second video game reference now. We're spoiling you. Yeah, old mushroom shaft. <laughs> right, okay, go on, Ross. What's your next? Oh, is it Stu first? Then? It's Stu now, yeah, with his Ghostbuster. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Ghostbusters. Two types of Ghostbuster. Both refer to rare achievements during shitting. <laughs> okay. The first type <laughs> is after you've shit and you look in the toilet, there's no shit in the bowl, as if, it had never t- as if you had never taken one. No one knows how this happens, whether it disappears up the U-bend or is being claimed by greater powers, it's still unclear. I think Vigo the Carpathian comes and removes it. I mean, he just eats out of your arsehole. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's just got his mouth open. Uh, he's a yeah. straight Slimer pops up. Slimer <laughs> pops up the U-bend and gets rid of it for you. Yeah. The second type is when shitting and you wipe, and to your amazement, there's no shit on the paper. Again, as if no excrement had been passed. Either of these is impressive, but the pinnacle and the, but the pinnacle is a double Ghostbuster. The act of performing both single Ghostbusters with a single bowel movement. <laughs> the average person will never achieve this amazing feat in their lifetime. So if you have, write it in a diary, as it will never likely happen again. Wow, <laughs> so that's not really a sexual one, is I it? Like it that's, uh, that's a nice little spin. Yeah, yeah. That's that's something I strive to achieve. A future episode both, shitting stuff. but never the same time. That's what I mean. I plan to do the double Ghostbuster. Go on, Ryan. Challenge accepted. <laughs> you get the platinum trophy if you pull that one off. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Ross, you've got one more, haven't you? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just do quickly two. Um, I'm going to start with the, the nicer of the two, I suppose. <laughs> um, the, the San Francisco bird feeder. <laughs> so you... Suck your own or another's come out of a per- person's ass, then spit it into their mouth like a mother bird feeding her young. <laughs> <laughs> How very wholesome. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the last one, uh, possibly my favourite, uh, just because of fucking who, but the act of freezing a bowel movement and then sexually penetrating another with it. Oh, oh the last one. Uh, that is the uh, Kentucky Klondike bar. <laughs> Klondike. I like it. Yeah, there's the Alaskan <laughs> pipeline as well, which is when you shit into a condom, freeze it, and then fuck someone with it. Oh, that is safer. <laughs> yeah, at least it's yeah. safe. I mean... there's a... I'll just rile off a couple of ones that we've not written down yet. There's a hot carl, <laughs> which is when you uh, put cling film over someone's face and take a shit onto it. Yep. Uh, there's the um, Alabama steamroller, when you shit onto someone's chest and then rub it in with your ass cheeks. Oh my god. <laughs> Lovely. 
Um, the dummy thick man, I love that one. In the uh, Cleveland the one, steamer, the one where you just shit on a glass table. And they <laughs> oh, like yeah. the person lies underneath it. Cleveland steamer, yeah. Yeah, sure. There's the there's the chili dog as well when uh, when you take a shit between a girl's tits and then titty fucker. Oh, <laughs> so, that's the chili dog. <laughs> do you have to be impressions of Sonic while she's doing it. <laughs> I think so. Chili dog, gotta go yeah. fast. <laughs> 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 Gotta come fast oh, before I get hepatitis. <laughs> and on that note, Stu, what have some maniacs actually written into the podcast for some uh, responses to this? Oh, yeah, let me have a look. Ryan, what time is it? What's this section called? It's time for what? People responses. Yeah. <laughs> God help. God help anyone who's written anything on this. They're all going to be fucking sectioned. I know that Gaming Arena did a special one for us. Oh, yeah. Stu's just opening the giant, um, like, file of facts <coughs> of responses. <coughs> so, obviously, we get letters delivered to the shed by, um, well, just a postman, actually. I don't know how he gets through the spooky forest every day. He must have, like, treats for the dubby thick man to keep him occupied or something. Yeah, you know, where people have so, dangerous dogs. Similar thing, isn't it? Steph Gannon did one. Oh, yeah. Uh, F.E.J. Gannon. Dirty Stephanie is so in the act of sexual intercourse when the man doesn't have any sex toys, so instead uses a brand new carrot and sticks it in her vagina or ass and then eats it. <laughs> That's a dirty Stephanie. At least you get lots of nice. At least you get a vitamin C out of it. A brand new carrot, <laughs> not a used one. We're not animals here. So Lit Gaming Arena um, thought that we were asking for um, descriptions of chart select if we were on Urban Dictionary. Oh, okay. So. That is, uh, if cum was sentient and attached itself to an Atari 2600 gaming console and somehow grew into three dudes outside of the womb and started a podcast. Yeah, that sums us up really well. (laughs) 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 Very good lit game in the reader. I like that one very much. That should be our podcast description from now on. (laughs) Maybe not. Right, um, any more, Stu? No. I think he said no, and then no on. Fair. I think went oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not surprised we didn't get many. To be fair, because people probably don't want to reveal that kind of thing. <laughs> Who knows what people get up to in the bedroom, right? So now from that, what are in people? Yeah. Right. Should we uh, activate the crystal ball and see what the fucking wizards are doing? Then those fucking dude bros. <laughs> to the crystal ball. <laughs> Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions, where nobody goes, stands the wizard's tower. Deep within this dank and uninviting place, works Shard Select. Hello! Overworked employees of the wizards upstairs. Stuart Milby! But that's nothing compared to horrors that lurk beneath the trash door. Because there's always shit games down there. In the dark. Waiting to come out. Anyway, and I said to them, you better find me some sex acts I can do, because I'm going to be banging all the chicks, on all the boys, on all the homunculi, before the night is over. Isn't that true, Master Cumbrag, aka Stifler? Yes, I've made lots of special homunculuses filled with various different types of orifices for us to try out. Dude, that is rad. I fancy your mum, etc, etc. Master Wizard, how are you? Yes, I'm okay. I'm just uh, looking at this wizard version of Grinder. Oh, very nice. I am going to try and do a hot call on the Tetris man later. Do you reckon he'll mind? I don't see why not. I was going to do the Kentucky tractor pull, but I think he would probably manage to turn that around on me somehow. Yeah, I might ask him if he wants to do the bus driver. He might like that, but be careful he doesn't put anything in your bum, you know what I'm saying. Those Tetris blocks, they hurt. Anyway, enough of this nonsense. Let us talk Just, about... Uh... Hey! Is that Master Big Balls again? Hello! Hello, all. My balls are even bigger. My God! Oh, they look very swollen. For a second, I thought a couple of large men had walked in the room, but it's just your testicles. <laughs> Looks like they I need call a them dream. Harry and Sally. Ah, very nice. <laughs> I was going to call them the Mitchell brothers, but that works just as well. <laughs> anyway, 
Shall we review a video game before we go out banging, as I believe the youth say these days? Who wants to go first? Let's. Go on, who's going first? Fess up. Right, fine, I'll go first. I'll put Grounded on the tower this week. It's a game that's in early access on Game Pass. Yes. Where you play, basically, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Ah! Where you play a small child running around a back garden. You have to craft different things, like Minecraft, but out of blades of grass and dried twigs and little stones. And then you have to fight off spiders and ants and woodlouses and... And there was one point a giant ladybug came rustling through the grass. That was quite impressive. Oh. Um, yes. But there's not much guidance, so I don't know if that's going to change. So it's like, what the fuck do I do now? Yes, we need a bit of guidance on our journey. There is a creative mode. You can... Yes, there's a creative mode. It's fun to fuck around in. Um, but yeah, the story mode's a bit lacking at the moment. But I guess that's why it's in early access. Early access. Yes. So I'll put it in the early access version into the good tier. Yes, that's very nice. I think that's a nice score from what you've explained, uh, Master Cumrag. And I agree completely. I was going to call you Stu for some reason then. <laughs> oh, don't call me that little cunt. No, he's a dirty little homunculus, isn't he? Uh, that, you know I saw him trying to touch Rudder, the dummy thick man, last week. Doesn't work. I've seen them clapping cheeks all all the time. I was out there clapping each other's cheeks. Yes, I can't get a wink of sleep for the sound of buttock on buttock action. So, who wants to go next? I can go if you like then. Yes, go ahead, son. I'm going to talk about a game that became a full price game uh, <coughs> that came in development because of someone messing around with the mods. Ooh. Talking about Far Cry. Blood Dragon. Yes. Yes. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> so, if you pitch, if you will, an 80s version of the future. Laser beams and yes. robots and neon. neon. Pink and blue Ooh. is essentially what Far Cry Blood Dragon is all about. Very good. Yes. It's quite short, but it's also quite cheap. And it's based on the Far Cry 3 engine. Except you play as... Oh, Rex Cult. That's I'm it. Rex Power Cult. And you, it's voiced by none other than Michael B. Right? Ah, yes. Yes. The fella from Terminator. He's the one. 80s action star. Yes, he's also in Aliens. That's the one. Corporal Hicks. Yes, Corporal Hicks. As, and uh, it's got... Wonderful voice lines. It's very well done. It's quite cheesy and clever in ways as well. It's quite short, but it's a good laugh while it's there. How would you tear this masterpiece of a game? I was going to stick it in thick. Oh, thick. I like it. Just like that sex act where you fuck a hamster. Master <laughs> well, I can't remember what that one was called, but it was pretty gross. Duct taping, that's the one. Anyway, Master Big Balls, as our guest, would you like to go next? Certainly. I've not completed this one yet, but I've started the game Vampire with a Y for Ooh. some reason. Why? And it... Why? I don't know. Why. <laughs> Classic comedy. Um, you play as a Victorian doctor who is turned into a vampire, and then you are set about the streets of London to either kill everyone, save everyone. There's vampire killing. You can kill anybody at a certain point, but if you kill somebody, then it will affect the rest of the game. So if you kill the bastard who runs the mob, then all the mob will have no leader and they'll start running about the town, etc. Ah, consequences. So it's... I can't... Consequences. I don't know if I can give it a rating because I've not finished it, but at the moment it's good. I will accept this. Sometimes we don't finish these games, we just review them anyway. <laughs> and that leaves me. I'm going to go for the first JRPG I've played in nearly 20 years that's actually managed to keep me interested till the end. 
which is Persona 5 on the PlayStation 4. I think on the PS3 as well, but who cares about the PS3? It's a story about some high school students who discover that they can access another dimension, another version of their world, where things are like there's monsters that come out of people's twisted minds, and they have to infiltrate these dungeons called palaces that belong to evil people. And by stealing the treasure at the heart of the dungeon, they can change their sort of conscience, I suppose you could say. Very basic magic. I do it all the time. Uh, so they can make evil people admit to their sins and make the world a better place. But of course, there's conspiracy and things go wrong. And there's a talking monster that looks like a cat. A cat that can turn into a camper van. What? Yes, you heard. <laughs> it's a cat. It's a monster, but also a camper van. One of those vintage Citroen ones. You know the ones. Why the fuck does it turn into a camper van? I don't know, but the party can sit in it as they drive around. I think that was kind of awkward. It sounds like one of these sexual acts we've got the podcasters to discuss. <laughs> anyway, I'm really enjoying it. It's very in-depth, very visually stylish, and has a good soundtrack. So I would put it in the wizard tier, everybody. The wizard tier. That's the wizard. highest tier. Yes. So... Now that that's done, let's all get to have a going out clothes on and go and score some, I believe it's called, pussy. Well, that was grim. Why do the wizards think they're young and cool all of a sudden? <laughs> Master Fenry's not being the same. I actually, when, when, when I heard uh, Master Big Balls talk, I heard, I remembered another sex move that I forgot to, uh, to mention during the main part, which is the dog in the bathtub, which is when you try and put your balls inside of a person's arse, and it's very difficult, like keeping a dog in a bathtub. Yes, I like that. Also, yeah, I can see where you're coming from there. See why Mr. Big Balls may have uh, inspired you. In, indeed. <clears throat> mm. Say, since Master Fenry's got on Twitter, he's, think he's full of himself now, isn't he? Not that he wasn't to start with, but he's insufferable now. Yeah, and then, I believe the young people call it pussy. Like, what a fucking loser. <laughs> so anyway, listeners, um, once again, we apologise for this week's content. Um, I think we have reached the bottom of the barrel now. <laughs> and worst thing is, we dragged Ross along with us to experience it. I'm pretty sure it was his idea, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it's all Ross. <laughs> Ross is like, we were going to talk about video games, but no, <laughs> Ross came and said, no, let's talk about sex acts. <laughs> and like, oh, that's a good idea. That's an and that's it. Off we went from there. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. Thanks. Are oh, you welcome? I'm glad that you've done it. Now I'll release the members of your family that I've got held. I have, well, if you say family, I mean, it's Ross, uh, just... Ross Cook indeed. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross, Ross has cook called in Shart Select. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, that low, low note, let's pass over to Ryan for the official outro, shall we? If there's anything else you want to mention. Anyone's still listening. Yeah, thanks, listeners. Thanks, Frog. It was good while you were here. Uh, <laughs> I, we understand. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've been Shark Select. You can find us on all the socials at Shark Select Pod. On the Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Shark Select if you want to sign up. We've also been on the guest, Ross Cook. Do you want to sign us out, Ross? Where the good people can find you? Uh, yeah, I'm just Ross Cook Comic Art, pretty much anywhere. Generally, Instagram if you want to find me, though. Get hold of me there. All right. I mean, do you want people to find you after this? Yeah, I want to. See... Uh, not if they're going to. Not if they're going to do any of the stuff. <laughs> I want to see this picture of Has and uh, Stu driving. Yeah, and listeners, if you, uh, of if... course. <laughs> Listeners, if you want, um, if you want us to apply pressure, pressure to Ross to draw one of the acts you've seen today, uh, featuring Stu and Hatch from Grief Marine, you don't, you don't then have to uh, do... leave us a message. <laughs> Just say you don't have to do any comic <laughs> where you see the thumb going into said ass. So. Well, you can <laughs> use. Um, we could just be a single image. The power of suggestion. <laughs> 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 Not like a graphic diagram. No, no. No, I want, I'm going to do it very. I'm going to do it as graphic as possible. You'll be able to smell. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, anyway, this, bye this everyone. Track, select, bye everyone. <laughs> Say bye for the people. Hopefully, there's no children. We will want. Yeah. Anyone, Pixie. anyone on the radio now is going to be the wrong one. Pixie. Like buying an 18, 18, an 18, <laughs> 18 game and you're only 12. Pixie into the dinosaur with some time. Please ask your parents why you're doing this. Alright, see you all next week. Peace! Bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Um.